what's going on YouTube so today we're gonna to be installing the right way gauge um, I told you guys this video is coming but I've been really busy so as you see this one here we have this is the actual gauge itself um, I purchased this for $85 through Mercer they have a little store so they can get this stuff at discounted prices I right, see so it comes with the mounting bracket and then the gauge itself so we're gonna go ahead and take this off of here um, see how that comes just the gauge um, if you're not familiar with this what this does is uh, it allows you to know the weight uh, per thousand pounds of what's on your drive axle so that'll kind of help you narrow you know well more accurately load your trailer and make sure you're not overweight with this running you know a spread axle I don't ever go to scales so and this box here this is the uh, right way mounting kit uh, looking in the box here this did not come in here I put this in here this is um, a fuse holder so you can jump off a fuse it's pretty much just called add a circuit I picked this up from O'Reilly for six bucks um, but everything else in here came in here you see I have a bag of uh, sorted connect brass fittings and then uh, 30 feet of quarter inch airline so we're gonna go ahead and get started um, what I'm gonna do first is run the airline since that's the hardest part in my opinion so I'm gonna go ahead and do the hardest part first and then we'll come in and then we'll hook all the rest of this up all right let's go guys look at it oh my god <laughs> you see that <laughs> he's got a skeleton in a freaking what is it a wagon <laughs> it's, I don't know what that's about Halloween's over hopefully it's not loud out here that reefer unit right there is running um, I'm over in the truck stop we're in uh, Phoenix so you got the wheels polished up today and uh, I gotta clean that box up. got a truck wash but it surely don't look like it let's go grab our tools major fail guys major fail I just stopped myself so I know what I'm doing wrong already I forgot that I didn't do this and I thought I did it but I did not take the air out of the system you know you can go and pull the uh, hold the valves to the air tanks or you can pump the brakes whatever makes you happy some people won't pump their brakes um, didn't really bother me too bad and we're gonna pump it down until all the or most of the air is out of the truck what you don't want is to take that off while the system is under pressure because it'll fly off like a cannon you don't want that we're gonna continue to do this and pump this down all right there we go I'm right, gonna go ahead and go back to work. You got the, the air out of the system. I chose to run my airline from this airbag. You can use any of the four, but I'm choosing this one. We're gonna go ahead and pull our quick connector off. I'm gonna have to cut that. Yeah. All right. So the quick connect's off. You see the frames going down. Move all the air out of the airbag. All right, so now that's off. On mine, this is a three-quarter inch wrench. We're just going to pull this out right here. I'm not going to take it all the way out. I just want to make sure. See, well, it came all the way out. I'll wipe some of this debris away. It's so nice and clean fitting that came out pretty easily I'm gonna leave this covered all right we're gonna start running the line that's what I want to do first if you're doing this you can do this in whatever order you want there's no specific way order to do it in um, 
But like I said, I like doing the hardest thing first, personally. But that's just preference. I'm just gonna feed this right down the frame. Hopefully that went in there and it did not at all. Ugh. Come on, don't be stubborn. That's a rock. I thought that was a nail in my tire. Yep, yeah, that's a rock. That's no problem. Sweet. I didn't think that came out like that. All right. So. Just to keep this from pulling. This is temporary. We're going to be pulling at this line. And we're going to zip tie that right there just so I know I have enough and then we're going to continue to run up the frame with our line. Ugh. Hopefully this isn't too difficult. I probably should pull this panel off so I can get in here to work a little bit better. Hopefully those screws that, that goes to it aren't too badly messed up. Thought I had this plugged up. Let's plug this up. And that's not the right size. That was warm.
we're gonna lube these bolts down and let them lube uh, rest in oil while we're working they're pretty rusty this is WD-40 commercial um, this stuff actually does better than the original WD-40 way better there's a gel so kind of help facilitate that to go back in there once we get that oh, I missed one I did not see that one I don't know why that's right there. That's weird. I shouldn't be mounted like that. We're gonna do something different to that. Let's see what we got going on here. That's not an actual glow plug, it's just a hole for it. And there's nothing in there. Should be a block heater, you would think, but it's not. Spray those down real good. I just dropped that. Rat them up. There it is. And there's a nut on the back of this, I bet. Yep. Um. I'll leave that one. This should be good enough to work with. I'll leave that one on. I don't feel like messing with that too hard. Yeah. Yeah, that should be good. That should be good. Now we're gonna get back in here. To finish working. I want this under here. Brake lines. Let's go right over top of those. And we really need to go under those. Yes, we do. It's the way everything else is running. Okay, that's cool. Find the end of our line here go inside the u-bolts Inside the U-bolts. And 
should have a hole. That side has a hole right there to go on the outside of the frame. Let's see if I can find one out here. Uh, I see the hole. It's right by the fuel tank. Not sure if I'm going to get my hands in there, though, is the question. I don't think that's going to work. Let's see. Feet up through here. I'm going to go on the bottom side. Beautiful. Ugh. Yeah, that's not going to work. I'd have to get under the truck. I don't even think, I think this truck's too low to get under here on flat ground. Yeah, it's way too low. Um, crap, 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 crap. Um, let me think, what do I want to do? Back this side of here. Um, don't just want to run over the frame like that, but that's what I'm gonna do. Let's go right back out right here on this side of the cab shock. Uh, maybe we'll go on the other side of it. Let's see. Uh, Yeah. Tight. Yep. Came out. That's right there.
Um, I had to put some loom right there. And this will go right into the dash right here. And we'll get in there and right now, go ahead and pull the dash apart. I'm gonna zip tie it last once we get everything in position. That'll be the last thing we do. So right now, we're gonna go ahead and take the dashboard apart. This is max mount, if you've never heard of these, these things stick to any kind of surface, they're great. They get dirty, just throw some water on them and they're still good to go. This comes apart relatively easy. You'd think it would be more to this and it's not. The area where he's fed in the, um, the airline is right here. It should be, see it? There it is right there. That is perfect amount. Let's go ahead and pull this off. I'll be drilling the hole through here. This is where we're going to be placing it, but first thing I want to do is make sure we can reach all the way over with our airline. And it does. So we have a proper amount of airline. This is more than enough coming up through the cab. All right, so I'm going to just tuck that back there for now. And then we're going to mark our location of where I want that gauge. You want to take into account where the edges are, as you know, you don't want to drill through those. So, uh, I'm going to put it on this side, maybe about right here. I'm going to drill it out right there. I'm going to place it. So it can't go below that. Uh, maybe I'll put it up a little higher in the corner. So what I'm going to do now is just put a couple screws back in this to brace this while I drill. All right, that's all. So we're going to go ahead and pull this out. I got a... Um, picked this up from Home Depot I believe this is I've drilled other holes with this this is uh, just a standard uh, hole driller so I make sure I check in my video because they say sometimes when I'm working the camera has a tendency to fall down so I just kind of adjust it but this is a uh, Milwaukee hole dozer just kind of drill a hole with let me double check the size because I have a tendency to do dumb stuff sometimes um, so I have several of these I just want to make sure this is the right one all right and that is that's the right one so we're gonna go ahead and drill our hole oh, ready let's get the stand wheel up all right so our hole is going to go about here for our gauge. Yeah, that's that's good. 
I wanted to get rid of start getting rid of these little rubber things right there, but I'm gonna put it about there. Good lord. This is a solid piece of material. Oh. Alrighty. Alright. So be careful, this might be hot. Just gonna toss that in the trash. I got metal shavings everywhere. And I'll have no air in the truck. Great. So, there's a lesson. I have a way to clean this mess up. Because I don't. I have a broom. Where's my little broom? Ugh. I don't want to get shavings in my hand. I'm going to kind of wipe some of this off to the floor. I can clean this up easily with a blower but it's the perfect size. Let's just make sure we didn't screw up and that's perfect. We did not screw up. So that sits in easily. Just kind of get some of these little ruffle pieces kind of back. They're sticking out. If you want to get a sander and you know sand the edges down, you can do that. I'm not going to. See, that's perfect. All right, I like it. So we got the hole done. So we're gonna go ahead and now, this is actually becoming a quicker install than what I anticipated. Where did I put? Oh, there it is. I'll take this off. And we're gonna go back to our screw attachment for the drill. All right, so we got that off. Now we're gonna get back in here. Actually, let's take these back out. That is not tight at all. I thought that was tight. All right, let's try that again. All right. So this will just sit in here like so. And then this wire right here, the brass fitting will connect into right here. All right, so that's pretty simple. So now that we've got that done, we're gonna go ahead and do our electrical wiring. And then we'll, once the electrical wiring is ran to right here, we'll have power uh, for this. And then we can um, actually go and we'll go put our um, airline on the, the airbag. We'll put this up right here. We'll air the system up, make sure we don't have any leaks. If we don't have any leaks, we'll go ahead and zip tie everything down in place, place our panels back on and we'll be done. All right, so. Let's go ahead and transition to the uh, passenger seat. Get this phone out of the way. Try to get something to drink. Uh, water. Water, water, water. See, I'm shuffling stuff around in this truck. It's everywhere. Ah! Alrighty. You have a Cascadia no matter what year I'm pretty sure they're all the same just like this um, it's where the fuse panel is this is just a cover and the fuses are right under here once I can get this out this thing is in the way it's always a finagle for me <laughs> this thing doesn't like to come out for me 
it's probably a better way to do this and I'm just doing it the hard way I don't know I just kind of rip it out there we go all right so that's out so you got your standard fuse panel you see I've already got some stuff rigged up just the same way we're gonna do here and I use that term rigged loosely so <laughs> take it for what you want I'm gonna hook this to the um, I want to find the radio fuse because I want that uh, that to go off when the truck's off. So I don't want that on. Where is the radio? I think that's it. That should be it. F8. Is that 15 amp right there so I'm going to test that to make sure what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove that fuse there is my handy dandy we're going to take this one out and then check to see if the radio will come on and no power to the radio. So that's the correct one. I'm just gonna make sure I'm right. It is the correct one that I want. It's a 15 amp fuse, which is plenty to run this. It's just the light, so that's not a big deal. What we're gonna do here, is take this pigtail out. Trying to make sure we're still recording correctly. This thing will sit up here, come on. Oh boy. I don't think the camera's slipping back up. Alright, so a fuse jumper. These are some then we put a little higher fuse. Alright, so we're not gonna use any of those fuses that came with it. I'm gonna we'll place this fuse back. And I always plug this one back into it right here. And we're gonna get a new fuse. The truck drivers and this is what we do. We carry bunches of fuses. I'd like to match this fuse that's in here already. You can put a higher fuse, it's not a big deal. But we are going to match it and put the same fuse on this side as what's in there. So two fifteens is what I've been using. You don't have to, not a big deal if you don't. But we're gonna use two fifteens. Before I put this in the hole where it came from, we're gonna go ahead and start running our wire. I need two lot wires. I didn't get the, um, I always forget something when I take tools out. I need to get the cutters and the strippers and the caps and the tape. <laughs> That's a list. Let's go get it. So, wire strippers. I just used them. Yep, there they are. I gotta clean, I just cleaned this out and it just gets right back junky. So, wire strippers, um, some electrical connectors that are in here. We'll take this too in case I need any of these. And, I like, my other kind of cutters we'll take these all right and our tape is right here we got plenty of e-tape 
All right, so let's try this again. Alrighty. So, let me just cut this, because this is gonna aggravate me. I always put a zip tie back on here and tape it. That's how I carry it in my toolbox. Pull off a little excess. Snap it off. I'm gonna run two wires of equal distance. See how easy this is gonna be to get this over here. I have a hanger. This is gonna wanna be a pain. I can almost touch my other hand, and I can. So that wasn't too bad. So now what we're gonna do is just cut it. Boom. One's gonna be the hot, one's gonna be the ground. So we're gonna have to figure that out right now. Is which one is which. So this is gonna be our hot wire. I'm gonna tie both of these ends off so I remember that to hook it up correctly. And the other one will be our ground. All right, so grounding is easy. Turn that flashlight off in our face. It's wasting my battery. This is getting to be a junky job. So a lot of crab laying everywhere. All right, so we're gonna strip this wire a little bit. On that end. There goes that. And we're gonna get I really need to find the softer ones. I hate these, these quick connects. I thought I had a couple left that are easier to, to close. I didn't get my priors to close these. I'm gonna have to go get that. Let me grab that and I'll be right back with you. All right, so we're back. I'm going to continue working. I hate these because they're so hard to close with this small wire. If this wire was a little thicker, it would be easier to get it done. That did actually pretty good. It's not usually that easy. You see I got this grounded. This is a good ground. I had other stuff grounded right here. And I'm just going to add to the list. <laughs> Another thing to ground. All right. So, I'm going to place this one at the bottom. That's pretty good. Let's double check that's the ground. That is the ground. Whoa. That wire just tried to jump out. All right. And now this one's gonna be easier than that one. That one, I don't like doing that one. Those connectors like that. This one comes with a quick connect. I'm gonna braid these up a little bit. To facilitate an easy entry. It's a stick wire. There we go. And we are in there. That's the wrong ones. Smash this down real good. I don't think it's really smashed that well. Mm. 
Let me smash it a little harder. I'm really getting at it. It's still wanting to be a little loose. All right. Well, I don't want that like that. See how the wire is bent? That'll facilitate breaking. This is really thick wire. That's better. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and plug this back in to the circuit it came out of. And I'm gonna double check our radio to make sure the radio is on. Fuse is good. So we got both of our wires worn in here, the ground and the hot. So what we can do now is place, is put this back together. We don't need to be in here anymore. So I got all kinds of wires coming out of this thing. I got all my D GPS and dash cam and stuff hardwired in here as well. That's what the other the other uh, piece is for. Let's put this back up here. You see, you don't see the you see how the, the wires are going up into there, and it's coming down in the side panel for the GPS and stuff. Place these screws back. I like it about 10 for the torque of the screw. And be careful when using a drill, you don't want to wring those off. That drill will just screw these things down too tight. I'll break it. All right, so that's good. Now we can go back to work in our other side, which is over here. All right, I'm gonna grab these, put this stuff in the seat so we can get to it. I'm gonna go back to this side of the truck to work. All right. I really like soldering wires together but these wires will be in the inside, so I'm not gonna do that. Um, I'm going to attempt to use quick connects. This never goes well. It's just, I don't think these are gonna actually work, actually. I don't think these are big enough. Let's see. I'm not sure both sides of the wire. We'll try and ground it first. Might both fit. Ah, did not mean to do that.
Well, we can smash this down is the question. Because these are tough. See it's smashing, but it's not wanting a whole it's a little bitty wire. Let's see. That's not gonna work. Might have to expose more of that wire and get it all the way through. Yeah, it's still not holding it, see? That's why I don't like these. Especially working with wire this small. I'm just going to go ahead and cut this off. Toss that. We got some more. I'm going to try one more thing. I'm going to try to expose more of that wire. The amount of wire that we exposed here was good. I'm going to expose a little bit more of this wire. Another quick connect. Hopefully, I have two more of those. Yeah, I do. No, I don't. That's not the same one. I got some bigger yellow ones. I think there's another blue one down there. And there's one right there. Boom. Let's see if this will work this time. Put a little bit more of that wire so I can shove it through a little further. And maybe it'll get a bite. It's barely getting a bite. And this was stupid. That was really dumb. I could have swore I put that wire through that hole. <laughs> I do one stupid thing a day. I'm telling you. That's not going to work. See? I got to take this off. Oh, great. One stupid thing a day. No one's perfect. wire needs to be through here first that was dumb I really thought I put that through there maybe I like undid it after when I couldn't get it on the first time well that didn't strip it let's try that again there we go I'll have to restrip this one I'm going to try and use one of these yellow ones. I'm going to take a little bit different of approach. Let's strip a little bit more of this wire of this one. Ah, jeez. That hurt. All right. I'm going to do this a little bit differently. I'm going to braid these two together. I really should just solder this. It would make life so much easier. And I'm going to shove them both in from the same way. See, this is an alternative that you can do with these. Let's see if I can't smash this one. Whoop. I smashed right there. Ah. <laughs> Whatever. 
It's got a bunch of those. This is why I have extra stuff. And that's no good. Actually, I'm going to snip some of this off. And they're just falling all over the floor. I got a crap, a crap load of mess everywhere anyway. It's not going to really hurt for that to be on the floor too, huh? It's one more thing to the pile. Alright, so we're going to wrap that up in there. And then we're going to place both of these inside of here. I must try and cramp now. Much better of a connection doing it this way. I like this. I'm going to do the other one the same way. And I always tape everything. I'm a taper. I even I tape everything that I solder as well. I have a soldering gun. I really should solder these, but these connectors will do just fine like I said this is indoors it's protected from the elements this is going to be on the outside of the truck I'd absolutely solder this but I'm not going to do that when I hook up the the lights on the headache rack I absolutely will solder that that breaks some of the string though no this is a really small gauge of wire you'd think they would have put a bigger gauge of wire on this but they did not. It's not a problem. Go ahead and wiring this up prior to um, hooking up the air. Not a big deal. I'm going to use another yellow one. I can find one. Now I want the yellow ones. I'm not going to have any more. Nope, that's life. I gotta replace these because I do a lot of odd jobs at random times, so it'll be one of those times that I don't need that. Nope. We're gonna split this. And then I'm gonna braid this in here. And then I'm gonna twist that like that. prevent that from happening again hopefully that works I'm just gonna shove all of this right on in there and that that helped I'll just clamp down clamp down that's not holding it <laughs> the yellow one was easier to close than this one what in the world There we go. No, not trying to fall. This thing just does not want to sit up here. It's still not very tight. All right, now I'm going to say this loosely while I'm doing this really quick. Some other mechanical videos that I've made, and people are commenting, telling me that they got shops and all this stuff. Well, if you're an actual mechanic, kudos to you. You know, I am not. I'm doing do-it-yourself work at the entry level. If you don't like the way I do it, I apologize. But you should know that this is not your truck. This is mine, so I can do exactly what I want. And the scale is lit. That's not what I want. 
I don't want this staying on. That's why I wired it to the battery. I meant to the uh, to the the radio fuse. I thought it would turn off, and it's not. I'm gonna have to put that in a different fuse hole. Yep, we're definitely going to have to choose a different one. So, anyway, we'll do that in a minute. Not not a big deal. All right, stay up there. So that's gonna go there. So the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and hook the other end of this to the airbag and then we'll come back in and then do this. That's the right one. So that goes into there. And this should go into here. Sweet. And then this one will go into here. You can do this whatever way you want. Um, That needs to rest just like that. It's the way that I want that. And then this will be on top. You see what we're doing? All right, so what I'm gonna do first is uh, go ahead and get all these wrapped. I use plumber's tape. You can use what you want. They make tread lock. You know, there's actual liquids that you can use. I find this the cleanest and the quickest way to do it. Like I was saying before, there may be a you know a super way to do this, but we're not doing this the super way. You know, we're doing it a way that it's going to work, work properly, and we're not going to have air leaks. Doing it this way, so this is the way we're going to do it. I personally don't like these brass fittings. I would prefer a quick connect. Um, but that's not an option dealing with that airbag fitting. It has to be like this, so. That's going to go into there. I'm going to go ahead and get this into here. Let's grab a pair of vice grips. And be very careful working with these uh, brass fittings. If you're not working brass fittings before, they're very, very brittle. And they will break if you torque too hard. So, let me get back. So, we need this to end up. Just a light vise to the frame. Don't want to crush this too hard. So this needs to end up. So we'll probably just turn this one, well, we'll see. 
you don't want to break this this will break really easily brass is not a hard uh, metal or material and it doesn't take much for this to seal from air leaks so you don't have to get in there wrenching on it too hard we'll give it one more turn and then we're going to call it good it doesn't take much all right so it needs to end about right there a little bit more and that'll sit perfectly to receive that airline um do i want to go ahead and connect this or not uh yeah we'll put this one in let's go ahead and give this a light bite again That's not three quarters. Let's see. This hanger was actually I was gonna use it, but ended up not needing it. Is it 916? And it is. All right. I got gear ratchets, as you can see. I love these things. If you've never used them, it makes life so much easier. And that's enough. That's tight enough. You can't put this airline in yet because you can't turn this while that's connected. It's not gonna work for you. But this is basically what the piece looks like once you get it all together. Oh, I'm gonna have to take that out and do that. Ah, I don't know how that's gonna work actually. Crap. That's not gonna work. That's a problem. I wonder, even if this is on the side, it would be the same problem. Crap. Crap, crap, crap. The frame's in the way. I wonder if we have the other problem, same problem with the other airbags. That sucks. So even if it wasn't in the way, you still wouldn't be able to put this on. Crap, man. I just need a little bit. Wonder, let me see. What was that? I need this to go up. See if we can get it like that. Nope. It's just too wide. Same problem. Alright guys, we're back. Um, so, we got the air pressure built up to govern a cut out at 120. Um, what I'm going to do now is we're just listening and feeling for air. And this is good. I don't feel any air. I don't hear any air when I listen to it. Um, if you notice the light's off now, while we were on break, I changed where the fuse was and put it to the window. So I don't understand why that was not, you know, that was the radio. And you see the truck's off. It's off right now. And it doesn't come on. So I don't understand why that had continuous power like that. But it did. So now we're good. I got it there. We're going to go outside the truck with the truck off. And... We're not losing air. 
we're gonna make sure that we don't hear any air or feel any air where our connection is. We're not feeling it. All right, that's all good signs. We're gonna do one final test. I'm not gonna do the complete air leak test. I'm just gonna hold the brakes and charge the system. That puts pressure on the system. You're gonna watch your gauges. We're not gonna hold it for a minute like you should. Um, because there was a leak you see that start falling. So you got pressure on the system right now. That's a lot of pressure. So that's a good thing. All right, so I'm gonna call this a good installation. Uh, the only thing we have left to do now is to where is the box uh, let's get this bracket mount it for this gauge just be careful not to fling these little screws out of here we don't lose them Push this back into here. I think this goes like this. And this is going to prevent this from coming out the hole. Alright, so that's all. I kind of line that up evenly across the, the surface. Go ahead. I'm gonna put one washer on at a time. So I got two of them in my hand, but I picked them both up. So these are lock nuts, and I don't think it's gonna go down so far. Yeah, all right. And I didn't want to lose that, so let's go ahead and put that one on, and then this one. I need to go grab a wrench to fit that. I don't think I have a socket that small. I don't know what size that is. Oh, three, I do. Well, we're just going to go ahead and use our socket that we've got right here. Sweet. And we're just going to snug these and then we'll adjust the gauge. We're not going to tighten it down all the way just yet. You've been thinking about putting one of these on your truck, you see this is really not that difficult. Just make sure you got the right parts. All right, so I uh, kind of turn the gauge that way. See those shards? Get those shards out of there. So I said you can file it and sand it down if you want to. I did not, so I wanted about right there. Let's go ahead and give this a few turns. Don't have to go super crazy. So as you see, that's nice and tight. It won't turn, and that's good. So we're gonna go ahead and close our this part of the dash after I blow this off. Here, my knee on this shifter right here. That is trying to keep this. Going in there. Oh. Like, what is that air? I hit the button. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall this panel. All the hard work is done. The only thing we have left to do at this point is just zip, put this back, the dashboard back together, and then go and zip tie up all of the line outside the truck. That's the easy part. I'm not gonna film that. Um, 
that's just going to be a lot of time for nothing. I think this video is probably already an hour, so we're going to go ahead and uh, call this quit some after we get this panel back up, all these panels, and get the dash back placed right. Proper torque. So I keep mine at 10. I want to over tighten these screws. Alright, so that's up. You see, you need to put this piece on last. All these other ones need to go on first. Now we got the last piece. Well, not really the last piece. I got to put the air valves back on, just the knobs. But that's easy. <clears throat> I'm gonna have to get a recip saw. I don't have one. The switches that I want are square. I have to cut square holes. I'm missing a screw. Should be in here. Let's go ahead and get these up so I don't damage these. Well, I have extra because <laughs> I'm smart. I took one of my panels loose and I forgot to put a couple of the screws back. And it's not a big deal where they came from. So, but these, I definitely want all the screws in, in here. All right, I'll find that screw eventually. I'm sure it's up here somewhere, but um, there you have it. I'm gonna do a different video on how to calibrate this. Uh, gauge it's not going to be in this video obviously um because i can't calibrate it my load i got on my trailer is 3,000 pounds it needs to be calibrated close pretty close to gross the heavier you are the better the calibration will be so you really want at least 40,000 pounds on a trailer when you take it to a cat scale to calibrate it it's a really simple process we'll go over that in detail when that video when we get to that point when i got a heavier load to go ahead and get this calibrated but that's pretty much the install like i said the only thing i have left now to do is zip tie up the line and put that panel back on outside that I took off on the side of the truck. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and end this video because it's getting to be an hour, but hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Like, subscribe, share to our channel, more videos like this coming. Um, if you're not on Facebook with us, check us out on Facebook at Truckers on Court. I'll be posting that uh, link down in the description box. But with that, I am out. You guys have a great, great day and a good rest of your weekend. This video is probably, it's Sunday here right now, so I don't know how long it's gonna be before it can get uploaded. Uh, it's what, three or four o'clock here. I'm gonna probably finish up in like 15 minutes and then I'll start getting it edited and uh, get it for upload. But you guys have a good, good day and like I said, a good rest of your weekend.